Hello everyone, this is Lisa from Power Wheelchairs for Success. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, safety in the home, especially for power wheelchairs. Um, as you know, and I've mentioned in other videos, power wheelchairs can weigh from 189 pounds up to 500, depending on how specialized they are. So when you are in the home, you have to be careful where you roll um, to make sure that it is accessible and then you don't strain to get around objects. Make sure the furniture is to the sides uh, and leave the center of the rooms empty. Uh, no rugs so you don't get tangled up in those. Uh, cords are really important. Make sure those cords are out of the way especially extension cords or any other wiring, you want that cleared. Um, so when you're planning on getting your power wheelchair or if you have one already, check the furniture. Where is it located? Where do you stress to get through? And see if that can be improved. Do you have pets? <laughs> this one is a really important one especially with the kitty cats and the puppy dogs. Um, sometimes they want to be playful and they might follow you. They might dart in front of you. Uh, they might put their paw uh, close to your wheel. So you want to make sure that if it's a dog that you try to train them to walk next to you but not in front of you and not to dart in front of you. Um, so you can uh, kind of work on that. Cats are a little bit harder because they have a mind of their own, so as we know. So um, usually they'll have common sense for the most part to stay away from things that are moving. Um, they're kind of skittish in that sense, but just make sure that you are paying attention where you're going and where the cat is, where the dog is. So um, when you're backing up, check behind you first. <laughs> I'm doing that all the time. Um, so you don't uh, bump into somebody or roll over their feet or knock them over. So just remember the weight of your chair is important and it's part of your responsibility to make sure that you're paying attention as to where you're going and to other people to make sure if you're backing up that they move out of the way. Um, but for accessibility, um, Check around your home. Is there an area that's too crowded that you need to clear out, take some boxes, put them away? Um, where do you struggle the most? Um, how is your uh, closet? Does that need some adjusting? Do you need some tools to be able to reach the hangers and bring your clothes down? Do you have funding? to be able to redo your closet so that it is at your level and that you're not struggling to partially stand up or reaching over and being at risk of falling out of your wheelchair into the closet. Um, so <laughs> I've kind of sort of lost balance there too, uh, but not too bad. Uh, you know, I've been aware that uh, I have a tool. It's hanging on my door. <laughs> if you look behind me, you'll see a hook hanging from my uh, door there. And that's what I use for the closet uh, because it's at a normal height. And so I have to reach in there to lower my, my clothes uh, without falling out of my chair. So all those things are important. Uh, and just kind of make a list of what is stressing you. I'm going to leave at the end of this video, I'm going to leave a, a few links that will bring you to some websites that will show you some rooms, some homes uh, that have some ideas for you. Uh, sometimes if, if, if you're looking for an apartment right now, uh, it's a little hard sometimes to find one that's accessible, but if you find one that you really like and the owner likes you, uh, See if they'd be willing to put in a ramp here, a ramp there. Um, know that for some 
hard transition. Sometimes there's hard transitions between um, the rugs and regular flooring in a kitchen, the linoleum or the tile. That transition can be really rough. So there are some little uh, rubber covers that you can put over. It makes the transition a little bit easier for you. For if you're using a walker, using a wheelchair, um, you can you can look online and uh, look for those little tiny ramps that you can put over a rough transition. So you're not <laughs> riding in a wild bronco. Uh, I have a, a transition downstairs that uh, in one of the hallways that's <laughs> pretty big. So I have to slow down because uh, otherwise it, it, it'll hurt my back uh, if I go over it too fast. So it's just those little things that, that are important to check and see if there are some changes that you can make that will make your life a little bit easier. So know that there's some smaller rubber, softer ramps that can go over transitions. Uh, furniture, check and see what's stressing you what areas are hard for you to squeeze through because you shouldn't be having to squeeze through. You should be able to cruise through without uh, scraping your knuckles or, or bumping your wheelchair into, into furniture. Uh, your doors, if you're planning on getting a power wheelchair, let's say you're in the process, measure those doors, okay, to see how big they are if uh, there is a big difference between if you're renting or if you own. If you own, then it would be on you to see if there's a possibility that someone could come in and make those doors wider if they're too narrow. Um, so the therapist will ask you, you know, the, the wideness of your doors uh, to see what the possibilities are. Um, there are people who know how big a, a, a door frame should be so that wheelchairs can get through, whether it's manual wheelchairs or power wheelchairs. Um, if you're renting, uh, talk to the owner, see if they're willing to make that particular door that's difficult or narrow, because um, this happens in older buildings in which the doors are pretty narrow and it's going to be hard to, to get through. So see if they're willing to make that adjustment and uh, put in a, a wider door. That takes a little bit of construction, but hey, they like you and you're, you're a good renter. You know, they might be willing to, to make some accommodations uh, and, and they should. You know, if you were in a wheelchair or you were already in a walker uh, and they were aware then um, they should be happy <laughs> and uh, obligated to make some some adjustments um, ramps are also important going in and out of the house see if there are possibilities uh, to install some ramps safe ramps because uh, we are in winter right now so things can get slippery uh, so make sure there's some salt down. Uh, if there are no ramps, then um, check and see the possibilities of putting in some ramps. Um, here in my building, I, I don't have a need uh, for ramps. Everything is accessible in that sense. See if there are doors in your building that need an automatic opener. Um, that's not a... Uh, big expense, uh, they can cost about a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks to put in, so it's not like a huge amount. Uh, so you can check in that in that sense to if you need to get from one part of the building to the next and see if uh, a door opener is possible. Here in my building, uh, there was only one, two, three. There was a door opener to the courtyard and two door openers to the outside uh, through the main door, and that was it. Uh, our building is connected to a nursing home, which provides some services to us. 
but there was no uh, automatic door opener. So if I had to go through that door, I had to wait and have uh, somebody open that door for me and hold it uh, so, so I could get through because it was heavy. Uh, it was a fire door. So, um, so that was a question. So I sent in a request to see if there's a possibility of putting some door openers, more door openers in the building so I could get from point A to point B. And they immediately put one uh, between us on first floor and the nursing home. So now I can get through without having to find somebody to open the door for me. So that's awesome. They're gonna put some more in. Uh, so uh, we have to raise some funds to be able to do that. But um, the, there's plans on second floor. There's some uh, double doors that are also fire doors that are very heavy and um, the members in our building are having some difficulties uh, opening those doors themselves. So uh, they all use walkers for the most part and uh, so they're gonna put some automatic door openers up there. And uh, there's a couple other corridors and doors that uh, we use often in the other building. So they're gonna uh, work on putting some door openers there. So it was just the question that I put out there if there is a possibility and uh, the answer was yes. So it never harms to ask, you know? If there's a building that you use a lot or you do grocery shopping or whatever and there, uh, there's some particular areas in which you struggle, ask the question, it never hurts. Um, but getting back to your home, evaluate your bedroom. How are you doing there? Evaluate your kitchen. And sometimes kitchens can be small, can be cramped. So are there any adjustments there that you can make? Bring down some items that you use a lot. Uh, bring them down to a drawer or to a cabinet down below so you can reach them every day. Um, sometimes we're living with people who are mobile, so they don't mind putting glasses and silverware higher but consider having a small set down below so you can reach it on your own. This independence is, is important. Bathroom, how are you doing there? Are there some changes that you could do? Put towels a little bit lower. Um, items that you need to reach in the bathroom. How is the toilet? Do you need support there? Uh, do you need grab bars anywhere in the bathroom? Um, is the bathroom and the kitchen are two areas that are dangerous uh, for us when we're in our wheelchairs and we really need to uh, work on that. Sometimes, um, and just know that if you are new to using wheelchairs, that you need to approach the, the sinks on your side, the side of the wheelchair, not towards the front because you're, you're not gonna be able to reach the, the water. Uh, so on cabinets too, go to the side, use your wheelchair on the side so you can uh, access what you're trying to reach. Check and see about those counters, how high are there? Are they? Is there a possibility to have a suction in which there's a counter that's lower uh, to your level when you're sitting in your wheelchair? Uh, we're about to get our kitchen remodeled uh, downstairs, so that's awesome. Uh, but I will check to make sure there is an uh, accessibility uh, in this new kitchen. So it uh, probably won't happen until next budget, but, um, but that's fine. I need to put in my two cents <laughs> to the best of my ability. They're gonna change the carpet, uh, which is awesome. Our carpet is about 20 years old now. So um, I just said, you know, whatever carpet you want to put in, that's great. Uh, just to make sure that it's flat and tight, uh, that it doesn't have knots or, or bumps in it. There are some carpets that have a special design and they have like little ripples in them. <laughs> My eye doctor remodeled his office, <laughs> put the ripples, uh, the ripple type uh, carpet in his uh, office and the remodeling looked great. 
with the new furniture. However, the carpet was really, really bumpy for me. So I said the remodeling looks great. It's just the carpet that looks a little, it's a little bumpy for me. But just make sure the carpets are not bumpy. So that can happen if somebody thinks it's cool. But when you have walkers and, and, and use of wheelchairs, uh, it becomes a struggle. So uh, think about the transitions. Think about the ramps. Think about the accessibility in your bathroom and then the kitchen, which are the two most dangerous areas for us to navigate. And is there anything in those areas which you can simplify uh, any transitions that can be um, changed out for lower transitions or for a little uh, soft rubber ramp that can go over that transition so you're not struggling to get over those uh, that transition. Uh, so there are a ton of things that can be done. So, uh, and I might have missed an area here or there, but think about it, all furniture to the sides, to the back, for rooms to be empty in the middle so you can get around uh cords extensions move those out of the way you don't want to be rolling over those um be careful with your pets and with people when you're backing up or turning around uh, you want to make sure that the coast is clear you don't want to whack somebody or run over the kitty uh, you got to think of the weight of your power wheelchair or even a manual wheelchair, because the manual wheelchair might be light, but your weight is, you know, uh, considerable, and you could hurt a pet. So I don't want you to be a nervous wreck, just to think about those things on a daily basis. Think about your bed in your bedroom. Sometimes the beds are really high, uh, just because they were made for a person uh, who is mobile. It doesn't mean that you have to struggle with that. If it needs to be lowered, uh, that might be a possibility. So uh, check with um, uh, a store that has beds. I'm not saying that you go out and buy a new bed, but you might be able to just take out the frame and put it on the floor so you can transition from your chair to the bed a little bit better. Uh, my bed is, is is pretty low it's at the level of the wheelchair so i can transition over uh, without struggling if you don't have the transitions yet you need to the skill of transitioning from your wheelchair over to your bed and you still need to practice make sure you have a uh, sliding board that you can use initially uh, the sliding boards are a little tricky for me to use. I'm not sure why, but um, initially they were very hard. So I did a lot of exercises and got my arms stronger. So I was able to just leap over or move over uh, from my wheelchair to my bed. So check the height of your bed. If it's irritating you and it's hard uh, for you to get in and out or transition from your chair to the bed, kind of consider lowering the bed. Um, and your therapist might also give you some ideas in regards to, to the bed and the height that would be more appropriate. Uh, chairs and beds, you know, if there is a chair that really annoys you, <laughs> you might need to get different types of chairs. Um, there's one behind me that you'll see. Um, that one is pretty low. So the, the chairs in my room are, are low so I can transition if I need to. Um, I can't think of anything else. I will put the links down below so you can take a look at the pictures and uh, get some ideas of what can be done to your bedroom, to the kitchen, to the bathroom, um, and make you uh, a more comfortable and safe area to live. All right, any questions, anything you wanna add in your own experience, uh, type it down below. Uh, this will be useful for others that come along to take a look at some information. All right, see you in the next time.